Greetings. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a dedicated server for 7 Days to Die. If you haven't done so in the past, you might feel that it's a little bit of a daunting prospect. But not to worry, it actually is quite simple and just takes a few minutes. So why would you want to have a dedicated server? Well, if you play single player, you actually don't. If you play multiplayer, while you can start the multiplayer session from within the game, the big downside is that it's not running in its own process. This means that if the client bugs out or crashes, so does the server. It also makes it harder to utilize server management software, such as 7 Days to Die RAT. So there are a few things you need to do here. First, you start by creating a folder, and this is where all the files will be held. The second step is to download Steam command. And you'll see the URL here in the browser, but I'll also put a link below. Once you have the file, you just extract it into the folder. You'll get a steam command.exe that you double click to start. Steam command will run and it will do some update and download into the same folder that you have. Once it's completed, you'll have the steam command prompt. The first thing to do is to change the directory for the 7 days to die install. And you use the force install directory command for that. And you can choose anything. I'm just choosing it to put it in 16.1 inside the same folder as the Steam command. After this, you have to log into Steam. Naturally, I'm not going to show that here because I don't want to show my password, but you have to put in your password and you probably get a Steam Guard code sent out to your email, for instance. The next command you want to use is the app update and you're going to put in 294420 and that represents the latest stable 7 days to die release. Currently that's 16.1. When the releases update, you keep using the same 294420 because that is a link to the latest release. Once you execute the app update command, it will start downloading the dedicated server. This is going to take a while, so just hold on and wait until it finishes. And as you can see here it finished and we're just going to quit out of the steam command. We're then going to go into the 16.1 folder that we created and we're going to be taking a look at the server config.xml. As you see, this is all the server configurations that you can be changing. Right now I'm not going to change any, but you want to have a look at them such as, you know, whether you're going to be using random gen or Naviskin, the passwords for the telnet, which port you're going to be having, whether you're going to be exposing it as a public server and so on. For now, we're just going to close that down. To run the server, you use the start dedicated.bat. That's the bat file that will initialize and start the server. It's going to take a few seconds, so just let it be. You'll be able to verify in your task manager that it's being started correctly. And if you get a firewall blocking, then just accept it so that it opens up the correct ports. As you see, the 7 days to die server.exe is running in the background. The next step is to go into command prompt and basically tell it to localhost 8081. This is the default port for the 7 days to die. And as you can see, we're connected to the server through the telnet. Here you'll be able to see some of the basics and you're also able to run the admin commands if you want to. We're not going to do anything here. We're just going to do a shutdown to ensure that it saves down properly. And this is something you have to make sure when you playing with the multiplayer server, you don't want to just kill the, the process that is running in Windows. You want to make sure you are doing a proper shutdown. And you'll see that the game does some basic saving. It'll save the chunks, it'll save the players, it'll stop the, the server gracefully, and you're pretty much done. And you'll see that all the data files are in this folder. Here you have the world files, which is all the game saves. You also have the, the config files, which is where you want to do modifications, for instance, to the game stages, if you want to look at the Blood Boon hordes, or to your items, recipes, etc. But it's all contained within that same structure. And at this point, you're pretty much done. You've downloaded the server, you've configured it, you've started it, and you've been able to shut it down. Now, the next step is probably to look at some server management, such as 7 Days to Die Rat. I've got a tutorial for a slightly older version in the description. If you do use it, remember to grab the correct version. Currently, you have to use the experimental one as older RAT builds are not compatible with the Alpha 16 servers until Tracken makes an official stable release that covers it. 
I hope you find this tutorial useful and don't forget to subscribe and like. If you run into any issues, do feel free to reach out in the comment section below.